It is wonderful to join you as you mark the end of your Greatest Thy Faithfulness course, as I said at the beginning, as some members of the church have worked hard to reflect on what your next season of mission and ministry will look like. And it's a demanding course for those of you who haven't done it. Uh, there's a lot of material to engage with. It's quite a high commitment uh, for prayer and for discussion. Uh, but to be realistic with you, I have to say that now the course has finished, the work begins. Sorry for those of you who are on the course, for whom that's disappointing. Um, because as you develop a fresh vision for the next chapter of growth and outreach of this church, uh, it is very hard work. Very hard work. The members know that it is not easy to grow a church. It will take a lot of prayer and hard work, and it will mean change, and no one likes change. But we see all over this diocese, there are many churches that are growing, and this happens, firstly, when the members agree that they want to grow. That's the first thing. The second thing with growing churches is that they're agreed that every member of the church has a ministry to offer. Every member finds their place of meaningful service within the church. And our Gospel reading for today from John's Gospel is so important for our understanding of our calling. Like the early Christians, we are sent in the power of the Holy Spirit himself to be witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. That's at the heart of it all, and not just for those first apostles, but for every Christian ever since. We experience for ourselves the transforming truth that death is not the end, the love and light and life of Christ triumphs, and he sends us into the world as bearers of this marvellous news. And we're engaged with this work of witness and worship, not in our own strength, which is weak and faltering, but in the authority and strength of none other than the Holy Spirit of God, who empowers us. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So as you pray and discern your vision for growth, we know the work of the Holy Spirit must be central as he empowers every person to know, love and follow Christ. And today we're thinking about the ways that each one of us can play our part in this story of the church. Um, I don't know if you've come across this joke. How is the church similar to a helicopter? If you get too close, you become caught up in the rotors. <laughs> <laughs> and it will definitely be the case that there are many people here who have served faithfully and been truly caught up in the rotors for many years, perhaps many decades. So thank you. Thank you for what you have given of yourselves to this church. And uh, you will have done all kinds of roles, and I recognise it is a, often a big investment of time and energy. So if you're feeling a little bit tired from your roles of service, I pray uh, that days like today refresh you. And if you do not yet know how God is calling you to serve this church, well, I hope today helps. Or it may be that you do have a role, but actually it's not quite the right one for you. And today can guide you to discern God's will. Our reading from Ephesians is a great help. St Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, encouraging them towards health and fruit and maturity in Christ. And he says it takes all kinds of gifts to grow the church. And then he lists some of them. Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers. So there's the five to equip his people for works of service, so that the church may be built, reach unity, and become mature. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. <coughs> five gifts that God gives to some in the church who lead and minister in a particular way. But the purpose of those church leaders is never to do all the ministry. The purpose of the church leaders is to equip the members of the church for their own works of service so that the church is built up and grows and comes mature. So if you are a leader, a lay leader, or a priest, or a bishop in this church, 
an authorised minister, that's our job, to equip every member to find their place of service where they themselves can flourish and grow. And I do want everybody to see themselves as indispensable to the health and life of the church. So how do we go about doing that? Well, firstly, it's, too, it's quite simple, really, uh, common sense. We, we reflect on how God made us tick, how God has given you a personality, various strengths and skills, various things that you couldn't care less about, other things that you are deeply passionate about, life experience that makes you good at something, and every person, the scripture says, has at least one spiritual gift, a gift of the Holy Spirit. And there are lists and lists of them through the New Testament. And the spiritual gift of encouragement, the spiritual gift of administration, the spiritual gift of intercession, they're all very varied. But consider how God sees you uniquely shaped to serve this church in a unique way. And then we consider the needs of the church. What are you going to focus on in this parish for a season of growth and outreach? Where are the gaps right now in the teams that are needed? And where can I fit myself in and give loving investment of myself so that the church will be stronger? Uh, there is an online survey uh, that I think you've had emailed to you in the parish it, uh, news and it's on the church website. It's really good. I registered as a kind of covert member of this church uh, to do the survey myself, to have a little bit of a spying on you. And it's really an excellent survey. It will only take you a couple of minutes. And it lists so many areas of parish life. Children's church, eco-church, publicity, hospitality, DIY, evangelism, art, social events. The list really goes on. In the New Testament, the image of a church is most often that of a household, a family, that's how the church should be. A family where we love and host and serve each other. At its worst though, the church is a place where people come as attendees to consume some kind of religious show that just one or two people put on. Uh, and it reminds me of my house, I'm the mother of two teenagers. And we have an expectation in our house, I'm sure you have in yours, that everybody in the house contributes. They pitch in on certain tasks in an age-appropriate way. And from time to time, it won't surprise you that my teenagers need reminding of the task before them, because they would quite like to, you know, sit back and let the two adults really do everything. And um, you know it's awful when you grow up and you start saying things to your own children that your own parents said to you. And so I caught myself this week saying to them, this is a house, not a hotel. <laughs> and then I stood there and I froze and I thought, oh no, oh no, I have actually now turned into my own mother who would say endless to me uh, with my messy bedroom. Ruth, this is a house, not a hotel. There are responsibilities, of course, that come with family membership. And in the church, the responsibilities of serving are never separate from the blessings of being a member. They're one and the same thing. As we serve, so we are blessed. So we grow in Christ and the household is built up. In the Bible, the word serve can easily translate to be the same as the verb minister. We might be comfortable knowing that we do some kind of job in church. We serve on a team in some way. And if you do, I pray that you have a vision that is not just a slot on the rota that you fill or a little job that you're willing to do, but that that is your ministry. That's your ministry. If you decide, for instance, to open a church cafe, it's probably not because Steny needs another cafe. <laughs> but it's because it's a ministry to make Jesus known. If you're on a stewarding team on a Sunday, it is not really because the hymn sheets need handing out. It is because every person needs to know the hospitality, the love, the welcome of God in his house of prayer. If you join the finance team and you process expenses and manage the budgets, this is a ministry 
because it contributes to the building up of God's kingdom. So understand your roles as ministers, ministers of the love and light and life of Christ himself. And I want to close with a reminder that when we talk about our roles of service in church, we are talking about something very finite. We're taught in scripture to have this perspective, <coughs> 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of all things is near. The end of all things is near. We had better take the opportunity now to serve the purposes of God because the day is coming when there is no more serving to be done. No more pastoral care teams will be needed because there will be no more grief or brokenness or sadness or loneliness. There will be no more food bank team because there will be no more hunger. There will be no more Christian aid collections because there will be no more poverty. And there will be no more children's ministry because there is no longer any opportunity to introduce the next generation to Jesus. Like the early church, we long for the day when Jesus will return. He will make all things new. All creation will be made new. The old order of things will pass away. This is our sure and certain hope. And we long for that. We set our hope on that. The Bible has said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived of what God has prepared for those who love him. The end of all things is near. And because of that, in the meantime, it depends on us to grasp the opportunities of the present day. May it be our passion and vision to serve the purposes of God here and now, to make Christ known as all of us minister in his name. Amen. Amen.